you still live because of his love and mercy for you. Amen. It's never out of our own works and our own efforts, but it's because God simply loves us. That's why we are still alive. Let us appreciate God for the gift of life. Sometimes we forget that what takes others would have taken us, but God has preserved us. He has kept us alive. Glory be to his holy name. Amen. It's a beautiful Sunday morning once again. This is the day that the Lord has made for us. The Bible tells us to be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. Amen. So be glad you are alive today. Be glad you are in God's presence. And be expectant. Be expectant. Expect something from God today. Hallelujah. I have a couple to introduce to you right now. I'm just wondering whether Brother Chimbogwe Isaac is with us. Brother Chimbogwe Isaac, have you come? You around? Oh, yes. Show him some love. He's around. I will request you to come. If you have any fans around you, let them accompany you. Lift up Jesus. Oh, lift up alone. Jesus. I am. Oh, my spirit. Lift up Jesus. I am. Lift up Jesus. Lift up Jesus. I am. Oh, my spirit. Lift up Jesus. I am. Okay, in the same way, let us welcome Sister Chisache Lillian to come and join Isaac. for them this is a step it is a step that is not so easy to take but once somebody takes it you just have to congratulate them hallelujah so uh, ladies and gentlemen these are the people who want to get into marriage they want to sorry uh, no 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 we are going to sort it <laughs> we are going to sort it <laughs> he's not he's not a haji Okay? Uh, yeah, I'm going to sort out the, the confusion that you and I still have. So, Isaac, unless you're taking two, but I want to request Sister Lydian to take two steps forward. Uh -huh. So, that is the lady. I think she can now step back. You can step back. And of course, the gentleman is one, so there is no confusion again. So uh, these two will get joined in holy matrimony on the 5th of October, 2019. 5th October, 2019. So just like how we always do it, we always advise you. The reason why we announce these people, we expose these people early enough, is because in case you have any issues against them, you make good use of the 21 days ahead of us to raise those issues in the administrator's office just in case you have any but you always spread deep inside our hearts that you don't raise any issue amen so those days are the ones anybody has to use to uh, to speak against their progress but none of you i believe will come so they need your support they need your advice they need your money and they need your prayers hallelujah if you have ever been in this kind of situation you know what it means you know, everything, everything is very, very crucial at such a time like this for them. So stand with them and support them. Pray with them and encourage them. Give them what you have, whatever is within your reach. So that on their wedding day, they will only see God and not the other one. Hallelujah. But for now, let us pray for them. Stretch your hands towards them and speak a blessing. So that everything will go on well with them. 
so that they will see the hand of God and have a reason to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. I don't know how they humble themselves, but for us we shall pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you so much from the very bottom of our hearts for these, your children, Isaac and Lillian. They have come before you to do what pleases you and literally what is right. We now choose to commit their lives in your hands. How we pray that your hand of protection will be upon them. We pray that you will go ahead of them and level every crooked ground and remove every obstacle that stands in their way. In the name of Jesus, we refuse every work of the enemy, every satanic plan, every demonic activity around them, we frustrate it in Jesus' mighty name. We refuse every sickness, every pain, every disease, every attack. We say no to accidents. And Father, we pray that you will bring the right people around them, people who will encourage them, people who will inspire them, people who will support them, and cause them to achieve their dream. And Father, we pray that you provide everything that is needed for their wedding. As the Bible says in Philippians 4.19, that my God will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. This is what we pray for, King of Kings, that you will supply every need on the budget, every item on the budget. Let it be met by you, all for your glory, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So there I will request Brother Isaac to hold the hand of the wife-to-be and take her back to her seat. You're going to march. Just give us a sample of how you march on that day because some of these people may not be around. Will they miss everything? Okay, just like how you will do it on that day. No, no, not like that. Okay, okay, just like that. The choir will sing for you a sweet song, but make sure you follow that tune. Don't run away, but march. Amen. There we go. You deserve all the glory, Yahweh, Yahweh. All the glory, all the honor. We bless the Lord who gracefully breaks us. You know, at times we go through situations, we go through heartbreaks, we go through misunderstandings, and we feel like the entire world is against us, and we feel like our prayers haven't been answered. But one thing I know is that our God breaks us gracefully. He doesn't break you to destroy you. Sometimes, you know, you believe in God for a promotion, you believe in God for a job, and you pray over and over. God is still preparing. He's still preparing for what you are believing Him for. So each time we go through situations, you should be confident and trust in our God. That He's a God that gracefully breaks us. He's a God that does not destroy you. So as we lift up our hands to worship, just surrender to Him everything. Whatever has overstayed, whatever you've been believing God for for a long, long, long time. Just get ready to give it all to him. His presence is in this place. And he's just ready for you to let go of everything. To surrender it all to him.
set me on fire. Come on, let's talk about this.
I am hurt and in pain. Give me space for healing and mountain air. Let me shout God's name with a praising song. Let me tell his greatness in a prayer of thanks. For God, this is better than an ox on the altar. Far better than the blue reborn bulls. I am hurt and in pain. But let me shout God's name with a praising song. Let me tell of his greatness in worship. Forever 
as you surrender everything give him all I want to hear the church say I give you all of me 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 all the pain all the heart all the joy I give you all it all belongs to him I give you all we live for his glory I give you all I give you all of me. One more time. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. The Bible says, sing unto the Lord a new song. And today we're singing a new song, raising up praise to Jesus. And we're going to say, let praises rise from the inside of us hallelujah may the spirit guide you as we sing together this is how it goes let praises rise from the inside from the inside of me may of me come feel my life from the inside from the inside of me set me on fire from the inside from the Side of me, everybody. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside, from the inside. May you delight, may you delight in the inside, in the inside. Yeah. 
your faithfulness is true. Your mercy is ever new. No one knows. Surrounds me like a shield. Your love amazes me. Your love amazes me. Your grace has lifted. Your grace has lifted me. Your favor surrounds me. Your favor surrounds me like a shield. Your love amazes me. Your love amazes me. Your grace has lifted me. One more time. Your favor. Your favor surrounds me like a shield. Your love amazes me. Your love amazes me. Your grace has lifted me. Your grace has lifted me. No one knows. No one knows. the church Adam now I don't know you ain't on high let's worship him say I don't know I don't know I don't know you ain't on high let me hear the church worship in their words you are holy, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. I have a He formed my heart. Everybody before before even time began my life was in his hand one more time I have a father I have a father he calls you his own he calls you his own
America, everybody. Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning. We are so grateful. Because you see everything we do. You know where we need to go. And everything that we do here, Father, is designed to glorify your name. So would you speak to us? Would you encourage us? Would you strengthen us? Would you show us your favor? Would you bring joy and happiness in our lives? Would you create a new spirit within us? Lord, speak to us today. We need hope. We need something that we can hold on. We need a message from your word, from your lips to strengthen us. So do it today through your word in Jesus name and everyone shouted Amen please be seated thank you very much good morning everyone I said good morning everyone mm. It's a blessing to me to be here this morning and to be able to share God's word. I never take any opportunity to minister God's word for granted. I believe that every time that God gives me something to say, God has got somebody that is ready to receive and that purpose is what pushes me that's that's the reason why I always look forward to reading God's word and sharing it we've been away for 22 days 
and we just came back two days ago, I think, and uh, we're still work, working through those uh, time differences and sleeping at the wrong time and waking up at the wrong time. So if you see me dozing off, it's because I'm still in the other thing. But while there, I believe that God had uh, had me hear his word, and uh, I would like us to start with this verse of scripture, which is, which is a promise to us for this month ahead of us. Psalms 102 verse 13. Psalms 102 verse 13, the Bible says, You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Let me repeat that verse because it is a prayer. It is a prayer from David when he was going through a series of afflictions. And the Bible teaches that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the good part of it is that God saves him from them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But here we go. So when David was overwhelmed by afflictions, he pours out his complaint before the Lord and then suddenly an answer comes to him. Verses 1 to 12 simply give us what David was saying. But then 13 says, You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Somebody say amen. Amen. If somebody could volunteer to read the scriptures, then I will walk around and be able to share what I want to share because I love walking. The scripture comes out of a series of prayers. David is constantly praying that something will happen to him because he's under pressure. As I said, he's gone through a lot of afflictions. Afflictions are very simple. They are exactly what they are. Afflictions. It's torment. It's problem. It's issues that no man can just walk around and finish and take away. And that's why David refers them to God. Now, when an answer comes to him, which is in verse 13, which you just read, the answer comes, according to Psalms 102 verse 13, there is a set time for the favor of God to manifest in every life. I want you to mark that word, the set time. Time in God is generally defined in two ways before God. One is a time called chronos, C-H-R-O-N-O-S, chronos. And then there is also kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, chronos, ne kairos, and kairos. Chronos represents a chronological time. Chronos, a chronological time. Actually, the word chronos is Greek. That's where we get our word chronology from. It talks about things or events happening according to a certain order. They must happen that way. God created time for humanity so that things will not overwhelm you coming at you without order. That is why you grow slowly your development is engineered and designed 
to follow a sequence. Chronology is what creates the past, the present, and the future. Chronology is what dictates how you develop from one stage to another. And every living thing has been given a chronological order of growth and development and therefore success in the world is limited to what happens to you sequentially. In other words, there is a sequence of events in your life that would dictate how you grow from one stage to another. Is that understood? We call that clock time. Things happen to you in seconds and minutes and hours and days and weeks and months and years so that we can follow now chronologically what is happening in your life. Chronos therefore means a sequence of events happening according to a set order. God has designed in your life because he's your creator, he's also your friend, he knows you, he has set some things in your life that must happen to you at certain times in your life. Some of the things are designed to grow you, so they may not be as positive as you expect them to be, because they are designed to grow you. They challenge you, they squeeze you a bit, but they help you go forward. And depending on who you are and what you are and the purpose of your life, your sequence of life will be different from the rest of the people. Is anybody following this? Are you following? Okay, now. How many of you know a mushroom? Everyone seems to know a mushroom. How much time does a mushroom need to grow to full bloom? Two days. Somebody said two days. Another one said three days. Depending on what kind of uh, mushroom you are, yeah, depending on the type of fungi you belong to, the kind of mushroom you are, but you won't be beyond a week. From day one to day seven, a mushroom has grown and has come and fulfilled this duty and is gone. How many of you know a mvule tree? Mvule, or eucalyptus. Let's say eucalyptus. How many of you know a eucalyptus tree? How long does it take to grow? You know, you have a forest of eucalyptus. How, how long does it take? Twelve years. So if anybody tells you, you are so slow... You should have grown faster. Tell them, you are not a mushroom. You are an eucalyptus. <laughs> they should, nobody should ever put you on pressure on certain things. Because we don't all grow at the same rate. Because some of us are mushrooms. They grow fast. Their usage is very simple. They are going to be eaten. That is the only use in the world. A mushroom has no other value except to be eaten. So, that's it. You're done. Am I making myself clear? But when you are a tree, and out of you will come timber for chairs, for tables, for woodwork, anything that is good. Your growth is going to be slow, unsteady. It's going to take a longer time it also takes a lot more effort to feed you, to bring you to the size where you're supposed to be because your use is not to be eaten. Your use is to decorate people's homes. Your use is to... You are going to be material used to build arcs and build houses and build homes. And Your value is much bigger than being eaten. Tell your neighbor, don't pressurize me into growth because I am not food. 
Okay, how many of you have seen a rabbit or know a rabbit? You know a rabbit? Yeah. And how many of you know an elephant? Good. Okay, now, how many days does a rabbit need to be? Is it called pregnancy? What do you call it? Some of you, gestation, that's it. That's the right word. How many months does it take a rabbit to go through gestation? One month? Just one. And how many months does it take an elephant? Almost two years, 18 months, and sometimes even more. So then, if somebody is pressurizing you and saying, you are growing so slow, tell them, indeed, I can't grow so fast because I am not a rabbit. I am a... Do you say an elephant or an elephant? <laughs> See, the point is, therefore you will grow according to the purpose of your life. And the things you go through... Hey, come on, somebody shout hallelujah then. Give the Lord a hand. Give the Lord a hand. So... Your job is to make sure that your seasons of life are not tampered with, they are not hindered, they are not interrupted, but that you are growing steadily. If you follow after God's order, things will come at their time. God is not only a time setter, he's also a time keeper. Can somebody say amen? amen? Now, I said God is not only a time setter, he's also? Now, when God has set a time for you, things will happen to you accordingly. And not all of us have the same time. Even if we share, even if we share destiny, some things will happen different. Things will not come at the same day, same time. Sometimes we catch this truth differently. It all depends on how we catch the truth of this matter. Now, let me go first and talk about Chronology again, let, let, let me finish. Chronology is what we call appointed time. Write that in your book or in your notebook. And if you come to my lesson and you don't have a notebook, I'll be disappointed. Chronology is what we call appointed time. Now, the word appointed means heaven has decided that things will happen according to order appointed time. Let me hope that this young man will help you make some of these notes for you. Appointed time. God appoints time for things to happen in every life. Even when you pray, if your prayer is about something that needs to come in its time, the only thing that God can give you is long age or long longevity of age longevity of life so that you do not die before your appointed time. Did you catch it? So if you ask for something that will come, for example, if you are a nine-year-old child and you, you, you are mature already, you understand some things and you say, Mommy, Daddy, pray for me. Mm -hmm. When I grow up, I want to have twins. I would pray for twins, and you are nine years of age. We will pray that God, at the appointed time, will give you twins. But we all know that at nine years of age, there is no way you can have babies. Your system is there, but the system in you... Ah, okay now. I just talked about systems. System. Every one of us is made up of systems. How many of you remember primary school education? The systems that make up life. 
Let me start with the most famous one. Reproductive system. It's got a system, isn't it? Uh-huh. Teachers. Digestive what? System. Uh-huh. Circulatory system. Respiratory system. What? Excretory system. Very good. Nervous system. They are all systems. The most interesting is the reproductive system. Because that one has a time gauge on it. And only the girls have the opportunity to know when. The boys don't normally know when. Things happen to boys and they don't even know. But for the girls, the system will tell you, if you try anything stupid now, you can have a baby. Because the system will come to a point where it marks and says, now. So since everything is in a system, you must know that that works across the board. Everything has a time. Doesn't scripture tell us to everything? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Uh huh. Quickly. You are supposed to read. To, to everything, yes. there is a season. Uh -huh. A time for every purpose under heaven. To everything, there is a season. And I believe that if we knew this scripture very well, we wouldn't be in danger. To everything, there is a season. And there is also a, a time for every purpose. If God has a purpose in your life, that purpose has got a time clock to it. Hello? Okay. Now, when God spoke to Abraham many years ago about him becoming the father of nations, God said to him, about this time next year, I shall return to you. And your wife, Sarah, will have a baby. Are you listening to me? About this time next year, uh -huh, I'm going to come back to you. And your wife, Sarah, will have what? A baby. Okay, now, listen. Why is God saying... Why, isn't God, why wouldn't God say, I've decided you have a baby. Sarah, have a baby. Because the baby that was going to be born was not a spirit. This is not an angel that they are creating. It's going to be a natural child. So therefore, it will take nine months for Sarah to be pregnant and next year, about this time, Sarah and Abraham will have a baby. It's Genesis 18 verse 10. It says, I will certainly turn to you according to the time of life, according to the time of life. And Sarah, your wife, will do what? In other words, even if we prayed for you now to have a baby, we will have to give you space and time for you to carry pregnancy so that your baby is a natural child. You are not giving birth to an angel. So if you need a miracle of a baby now, you should have prayed last year. So you see, because according to the chronology of time, time in a human being is limited by a law called the time of life. Every time you see the word time and you relate it to life, that will be a year. In the book of Daniel, when you read 
seven times, that is seven years. Three and a half times, that is three and a half years. So, God said, by this time next year, according to the life of time, Sarah will have a baby. Did Sarah have a baby? Answer? Was God in order? But what happened there, I'm going to come back to it very quickly. So, there are things that must happen on time. You must allow God to go back and bring them on a time. In the book of Exodus, when Pharaoh refused to let the children of Israel go, God said, I am going to fight you over this. Tomorrow, Exodus chapter 9 verse 5, tomorrow, this thing will be, tomorrow, read, then the Lord appointed a set time, saying, tomorrow, the Lord will do this thing. What was he proposing to do? If you go back to verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, mm. go into Pharaoh mm. and tell him, thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. For if, For if you refuse mm. to let them go mm -hmm. and still hold them, mm -hmm. behold, the hand of the Lord will be on your cattle mm -hmm. in the field. Very on the good. Horses, on God the is saying, I must be allowed to give you time. Because I'm going to fight you now. There's going to be a fight. Tomorrow, if you don't let my people go, the hand of the Lord will be on your cattle. It will be on your sheep. Every flock in Egypt will see trouble. I've given you time to repent. If you don't, by tomorrow, you will see this thing happen. Did it happen? Answer. Why did God appoint time? You need to fabricate pestilence. Not that he needed, but he wanted this man to repent. So time and time again, over and over time again, God sets appointed times for people, for events, for situations. There are things in your life, even if you prayed and died praying, they would never happen except at their given time. And that is limited to man. It's not limited to God. But God is God. Everybody say God is God. Now, God is not limited by time. He does not have a clock. He does not have a watch. He lives outside of time. When he steps out of time, he allows time to go. Because he's God. He created time for us. But he lives in another environment in terms of time. It's called eternity. Eternity is time. But... To eternity, there is no end. In the Greek, they coined a word called kairos. K-A-I-R-O-S. Kairos. It talks about interventions. Now you got it. Interventions. It is the way God steps out of eternity and jumps into chronology. In other words, even though everything was going as appointed, are you following? God can come in and interrupt. But because it is God, then everything in him comes at you. He created chronological time so that there would be order. But he also created Kairos so that he can intervene in this order and cause Kairos to be the intervention. It's what we call a miracle. In other words, you are not supposed to be anything. But God jumps in and makes you something. 
Even though life continues, but something happened to you. And you walk in this life, but you have got something that is almost unnatural. Supernatural. Why? Because God intervened. God interrupted a natural system to cause a specific order to come into your life. At the age of 90, Sarah had a baby. The natural dictate of life is, at the age of 90, no woman has a baby. The discussion between God and Abraham and Sarah is, we cannot have a baby. My wife is past age. When God spoke to Sarah, Sarah said, we cannot have a baby. My husband is dead also. Dead also means he is accusing me, but I am also, I've also got the right to accuse him. He is dead also. Go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Verse. Start with verse 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear. Moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the serving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. faith. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would afterward receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Read. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Hold on a bit. I'm looking for a verse. Let me get it myself. I would like Abraham, I would like for Abraham to, to get a baby even though he was dead. Hebrews. Are we in Hebrews now? Are we there? Okay. If it's not Hebrews, then I will go to Romans. Let's go to Romans. Hmm? Romans for what? That's it. That's where I want to go. Romans 4. If you are there, let us read verse 17. As it is written, it is written, I have made you a father of many nations mm. in the presence of him whom he believed, even God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Look at this picture now. God calls things that are not. God stands in his time, in eternity, in the presence of what he enjoys on his own and calls things to happen in your real life as though they were real. In other words, you are walking through this maze of life you have no assurance how it will happen. But God is standing here. So he can call life into your situation. Even though the dictate of that natural life says you cannot. So he called Abraham a father where he could not be a father. He made him a father where he could not. Because he's maker. Because he's creator. He walks out of his season and time and comes into your season and says, even though you are past age, I'll still give you a baby. Because I am not depending on your dictates. God is not depending on our dictates. The dictates are for us. Chronology and kairos don't work together. Only God has capacity to jump from that area and come into your natural life and cause things to happen. 
Even though they are not supposed to be, they can be because God makes them happen. Oh, people, please. Now, listen, verse, verse 19. And not being in weak, and not being weak in faith, yeah. he did not consider his own body Why? already dead. He did not consider his own body which was already dead. In other words, Abraham's body could not produce a baby. It was already dead here in the natural life. But God stands in eternity and he says, uh -uh, it is dead, but I have the power to make dead things alive again. <laughs> hey, hey. So even today, even though your life is dead, mm -hmm, even though your situation is perilous, full of death, God has capacity to jump from his area, come into your life, inject new life in you, and then allow you to continue as if you were not dead. He calls dead things alive. He makes things, even if the things were not there. It says, even if the things are not there, he calls them as though they were or they are. So to God you can say, I am not this. No, 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 no. He has the power to make you from his position. He has the power to make you what you are not there. He, he comes in and makes you and then goes back away. What he has made you, nobody can change. That intervention is what we call a miracle. That intervention is called kairos in Greek. It, take, it talks about things that come to you that were not supposed to come to you. Now, what are these things? Number one, favor. Favor. You are not supposed to be favored. Who are you? What do you do anyway? But God decides, I am going to favor this man. I am going to favor this woman. And God does what? Favors you. When he does favor you, you operate above normal because of God's favor. When God sets a time for you and things don't happen as you expected or he expected, then he will intervene and things will happen and everybody will be marveled because they did not expect that to happen. <laughs> Let us read on as we go to another scripture very quickly. Um, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. He was a hundred years of age. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. Both wombs were dead. You had two deads. No chance. But God intervened. And that's what I'm here to tell you. This whole month of August, we are going to see God's interventions in our lives. This month is going to be a month of intervention. God is going to jump into a system and where you expected nothing, where you had no hope, God will bring hope. When you had no expectation, God will bring expectation. When there was nothing, God is going to bring something. Is anybody following this one? We normally talk about Abraham because he's a father of faith. And the only example we have is the deadness of wombs. But we also forget about other things. There are people that God made rich when they were supposed to be poor. 
what was this man? First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. The Bible says, Jabez, let us read. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. And Jabez? Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Yes. And his mother was his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. Hold on. This young man was born and he was supposed to be more honorable than all his brothers. But because his mother bore him in pain, she curses her own son. His name shall be Jabez because I bore him in pain. In other words, he gave me so much pain. He should be called Jabez, the pain bringer. Jabez also means hopeless, useless, blessingless. It means never mount up to anything. He's a trouble causer. He's a bad person. Should never be blessed. Should never enjoy life. He's a problem. I should not have gone through all of this. And somehow, the name seems to have caught up with the young man. He was supposed to be more honorable than all his brethren. But it turns out that he is not as honorable as he's supposed to be. Because of what had been spoken by the mother. In other words, this young man was walking under a curse. Okay. Let us read verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Je Jabez now prays, calls upon the God of Israel saying, Oh, oh that, that you would bless me indeed. Hold on, hold on. Oh God, you are the God of eternity. I am walking in my time and I am without a blessing. And I am a pain bringer. Not only am I a, 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 a sorrowful person, but I also cause sorrow. Not only am I a cursed one, but my curse extends to other people. Not only am I in this situation, but I also cause others to be in the same situation. My mother's curse has caught up with me. Oh God, please bless me indeed. In other words, come from your Kairos area, intervene in my situation and remove this curse. When you call upon God, when you pray, what you're asking God to do is to come and intervene in your situation. Bring something that is not natural. Do something that breaks the norm, that destroys what I've been going through. And he said, and, and, and enlarge my territory. God! Whatever I try to do here, I struggle for a whole year, nothing works. I work hard, I sweat, I try everything I can do, but nothing happens. Look where I'm limited, 50 by 100, I can't go anywhere. Please jump from your situation, come here and enlarge my territory, extend my borders. Read and enlarge my territory that mm -hmm. your hand would be with me please do not withhold your hand extend your hand into my situation and change my status quo and that you would keep me from evil that i may not hold on before you get there extend my territory means i cannot go beyond here everything i try to do i can never extend I am limited. I am hampered. It's like I have barriers around me. I 
feel like fortified and I can go nowhere. Look at my territory. I'm limited to a small place. Would you please extend me? It doesn't happen naturally. It takes the hand of God. So please extend your hand. Let your hand be upon me or with me. What I want you to do is walk away from where you are. Uh -huh. Come into this situation and help me. Mm. You got it. It's clicking. Read. And that you would keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. Because whenever I try to do anything, somehow calamity catches up with me. Somehow evil befalls me. If I remind you, God, I used to have a, a, a truck, a lorry. While all the others survived, it is mine that was involved in an accident. I've never recovered it. I had a relationship. While everybody else is bragging about 20, 30, 40 years of marriage, I'm the only one that has failed in mine. I don't keep a wife, or I don't keep a husband. I don't know what happened to me. Evil seems to be my part of life. I walk here in this area of life, but my surroundings are all evil. So jump out of there and come into my situation. Give me something that is opposite of evil. Mm. Evil, bad things is what belongs to me. Poverty, sickness, disease, limitation. Come on, people. This is what I am experiencing. I need an intervention so that I can do something better. Folks, let me tell you something. God has revealed to me this is our month to pray and God's intervention will come to us. Mm. The English people are very clever, not only in Uganda, but also in Europe and everywhere. When, when they are happy, they, they grin, actually. They don't even smile. They grin a bit and they go back to normal. It's like they are statues. When they clap, they clap like so and stop because they don't want to show a lot of excitement. But listen to me. Your miracle will give you excitement. God's intervention will show you and give you excitement. What you did not expect is coming because God is stepping out of his time to intervene in your time. He says, I want you to keep me from evil. Uh -huh. That I may not cause pain. I am the cause of pain. I am the trouble causer. <laughs> Whatever I do hurts somebody. Whatever I say is misunderstood because it hurts people. I am the source of trouble for people around me. I am the source of trouble for my family, for those around me, for my workmates. I am the problem itself. Intervene in my life Give me something else. Aha. So, what happened next? So, God granted him what and, he requested. And God granted him what, what he, he requested. requested. Full stop. Now, here is a big one. Here is a big one. From verse 1 up to verse 8 in that chapter, you will see a list of names. So and so, we got so and so, so and so, we got so and so. The normal sequence of life was. There was only begetting, 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 begetting. No intervention. It's a natural life. It's all chronological. Everybody was getting babies. When you come to verse 11, your numbers begin to come up again. And Shilap, the brother of Joshua, begat Mehir, which was the father of Eshton. And Eshton begat... Beth Rapha and the Beth Rapha begat and then you come back to the normal. When, 
when God's intervention happens, it is recorded as an intervention. And when God pulls out, life continues normally. From verse 1 to verse 8, is all begetting. From verse 11 all the way up to the end of the chapter, is all begetting. It's a record of people. There was only one intervention. One man asked for something and God granted him what he wanted. Now, here is the point. The point is very simple. The punchline is, this month, God is going to allow you an opportunity to say something that he will intervene in your life and at that stage it will happen. Now, after it has happened, for others, life will continue normally. But for you, this intervention will go with you. In this entire chapter, in this whole chapter, nobody is spoken of as having prayed a prayer that was answered. There are no interventions. It's people getting the same thing over and over again. So and so, so and so, so begot so, and that's it. I heard from God. Intervention is on its way. When God gives you an opportunity and you seize it, did you hear that word? And you do what? then God changes your destiny right there. There are things, and I don't have the time now because time is used up, but there are things in life that God must come in and show that he has intervened, and nobody can change them. It is not what people say, it is what God says. It's not even where you're born. Even if you were cursed, even if you had issues, God's intervention in life is so that you can have a better life, another opportunity, another shot at blessing. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Let's close it with this idea. The whole of the month of July, we were talking about taking the head of Goliath. Honey, listen to me. And this is the truth. Without Goliath, nobody knows David. Your prayer must be, God, give me some Goliath. Don't be like other Pentecostals who fight against Goliath. Goliath is a blessing. I want your blizzards to wake up. I want your antennas to shoot up. Because this is where it is. The things that happen in your life are the kickers. They are triggers. The challenges in your life are the triggers. God had always wanted to bring a king after Saul had messed up. There was no way David was going to become king. So how does he come? You need a Everybody shout, Goliath. When you kill Goliath, when David slaughtered Goliath, here is what happened. The Bible says, Saul said, Saul, King Saul said, Who is the, who is, whose son is this little man? Whose son is this boy? And everyone said, we don't know. You don't know? Abner, the commander, the army commander was said, was told, find out who the father is. Nobody knows. By the time they are still discussing, David is walking with Goliath's head in his hands and comes for King Saul. And King Saul says, stop here, young man. What's your name? David, sir. David? Who is your father? My lord, or your royal highness, my father is your servant, Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Suddenly, everybody knows David. Suddenly, everybody knows about Jesse. What happened? Intervention. Then the king said, tell Jesse, David is useful to the kingdom. 
he will not come back to you. You wanted him. Listen, the family had relegated David to looking after the sheep. God says, "Uh uh-uh, I have found me a king. He will not come back. When God intervenes in your life, you don't go back to the first, to the letter status. You do not return where you were. No. Your system is elevated. Your status is appraised. It's very stupid. There is going to be promotion this month. Somebody will have intervention. That's what you should be praying for. Now, intervention looks like something that you don't understand. But number one is favor. Number two is called grace. Favor is when God allows you, allows your bosses to appreciate you. Those above you love you. Those above you fight for you. Those above you feel you are indispensable. You are so useful to them, they don't want to get rid of you. I know a man in the Bible to whom the boss said, name your price, but don't go. Tell your neighbor what I just said. Favor was on Jacob. Jacob was becoming as popular as you can imagine. And the boys told their daddy, this man has brought a a blessing to our house. And so Laban said to Jacob, you name your price and stay with us. Please don't go. Because we know God has blessed us because of you. Favor. That's what you need. That's what you need. You need your bosses to feel like you are indispensable. Your bosses feel this woman has helped our company. This man is useful in our system, in our company. We cannot go without him. We need him or her. And they're talking about you. It's called favor. It doesn't come easily. Favor belongs to God. You can't go to a supermarket and get favor. You wouldn't measure it in kilos or in pounds or in any other linear measure. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. The next thing that happens to is grace. Grace is when you have favor with those below you. Those below you talk to you, talk about you as being so good. Okay. Okay. You you don't want to see it. But that's what it is. Grace is when the people below you talk good of you. When favor is removed, or when grace is removed, whichever is removed, your rates drop so fast, you wouldn't know it. Favor is what brings people into government power. Grace is what keeps them there. When the people hate you, you're gone. Number three. When God's intervention happens, God gives you wisdom. Wisdom. God gives you wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to harness knowledge. Wisdom comes when you know something, but you possibly don't know how it works. It's a combination of many things, but it's called wisdom. To some people, it is called quick wit. Quick wit is when you have an answer on your fingertips, just like that. Just like when Pharaoh asked Joseph and said, what do you think we do over this uh, famine that you are talking about is coming? And Joseph had an answer. 
Let Pharaoh do this. Let him choose a man. Let the man collect funds. Let him collect all the food. Let them collect 20% of... And the way he was talking, it was like he had already rehearsed this thing. Quick wit. You have an answer all the time. It comes from God. It doesn't come from people. People give you knowledge. They give you a little bit of understanding. They can give you instruction, but wisdom comes from the Father above. The Bible says, is anyone of you lacking wisdom? Let them ask of God. Who will give it liberally. Wisdom comes from God. Number four. God gives people. Everything you do on this earth will depend on people. God gives people to people. God will give you people. You need people who know where you want to go. You need people who know what you want and where it is. Sometimes it's not what you want, it's what you need. But God will give you people. Because people are a reservoir of God's secrets. Some people know some things, they just don't know how to use them. People will talk to you and surprise you with information that they have about your business, about your work, about what you do. But the thing is, God allows you to meet them. I was talking about Joseph a couple of minutes ago. Do you remember the man that led him to Pharaoh? A fellow prisoner. He had a connection between him and Pharaoh. Nobody knew Joseph. When Pharaoh had this dream and he explained it, what happens? Oh, God, may God forgive me. Mm -hmm. I know a young man in jail. He is in prison. He interprets dreams. I know him. Pharaoh, allow this man to come before you. He will tell you what you dreamt. He will also give you an answer. The man knows how to unravel riddles. He, he can reveal anything. Enigmas are nothing to him. Please let him come. And Pharaoh said, let him be brought. Now when they are bringing you out of jail, you don't come as you were looking in jail. They clean you first. That was the end of Joseph's jail term. Comes before the king and he answers the riddle. He answers the dream. And just like that, he is in a position of power. A position bigger than the man who introduced him to Pharaoh. You need men. They are part of your destiny. So don't despise people. Some of you sit with others and you don't even care to know who they are. Like now you may have seated with somebody and you are saying, Obo nani no, whenever you sit with somebody, say, hi, my name is Mary. That's all it is. And they will say, I'm some, where do you go to work? Well, I am. I am somebody, and they'll tell you who they are. And you'll be surprised who is seated there. Before I forget, let me give you number five. Number five is ideas. God gives ideas. Business ideas, anything ideas. As long as you need to do something in God, you will need an idea. God does not respect people whose brains don't work. This is your season now to pray for these five. Favor? Shout somebody, favor? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. And... That's it. Anybody has those five? They're in business in this world. You will never fail. And this is a time for you to get them. Now let me tell you a story. 
a quick one, and you know it already. I've already told. I, I went to a church in a, a city called Hille Road. Hille Road is in uh, Denmark. It's about 25 miles south of Copenhagen. As I was flying out of London into Copenhagen, I dozed off a bit, and God quickly spoke to me and said, my ideas, my dreams don't die. So you preach that and say, God's idea does not die. So I flew into the city and started ministering. On this Easter day, I preached that same message. And I said, Jesus, Jesus the Lord was God's idea. God's vision for the world. He couldn't have just vanished like that. When he died, he had to rise again. There was a man seated on the front bench in shorts. Very simple man. Short sleeve shirt. He had me preach. After service, we went for lunch. And during lunch, a telephone call to the pastor. The man was saying, I want to talk to that, that pastor from Uganda. So they talk in Danish and they finish. And the story is, the next day, which was uh, Easter Monday, public holiday, he wants me to visit with him. Um, he takes me somewhere, and after that we'll have lunch. So he'll host me for lunch. Hey, who doesn't want to eat? So I'll go for lunch. Okay? So the next day, we get into his car. This time we have left our car. We drove our car up to his home. Very nice post home. Very nice home. And we got into his car, a Mercedes Benz, a brand new Mercedes Benz. Brand new. Mercedes Benz cars are totally different. I wish everybody could buy one. Anyway, so we drive and he starts to speak to me because of me. He has to now fight to make sure I speak some broken English. Uh, he's called, his name is Johannes, which is short for, long for John. Johannes. He says, uh, Pastor, uh, uh, I, I'm driving to a place called Malmo. Marmo is a big, massive uh, hillside where they have all the transmitters and antennas, something close to Kololo and Naguru, if you, have, if you are acquainted. And uh, uh, my name is Johannes. I am the third officer in the government of Denmark. Third officer means he's a minister, a deputy minister, actually. He's an assistant minister or deputy minister, if there's anything like that. I control all communication, everything, radio, television, I control. And suddenly I am awake now. And you see, now I, uh, uh, all the radio stations in uh, 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 Norway, Finland, uh, Denmark, Sweden, Belgium, I control here. Because uh, my ministry is not just Denmark. I control all Schengen countries. Seven of them. He controls the media department. He's minister. A minister in a short... So, we go all the way up to Malmo and he's showing me all these transmitters, the antennas and all the equipment. He says, you see in, in here, uh, a, a transmitter five year old, Two world we don't use. We throw, we uh, give away to... to, to, to we, we just destroy because uh, uh, technology too old. Uh, now transmitter, this one is three years. This one condemned already. I'm going to switch off, put new one because this one is three years now. Uh, uh, this one now Condemn, this one condemn, this one condemn. In other words, they're going to switch them off and put new ones. And when we condemn, we put incinerator, we put on fire, and then we burn. Because, you see, technology is too old. Now, you remember yesterday you speak about vision, it don't die. Mm -hmm. uh, and you talk about your vision for radio. Yes. I am going to give you radio. Here I have uh, 
uh, equipment or equipment, transmitter, transponder, antenna, everything you want is here. I give you equipment, I give you engineer, I give you everything you need, cables, wires, anything. You, uh, engineer will come, fly to Kampala, uh, he set up equipment, radio speaks, he comes back. If you go Kampala, radio doesn't speak, he don't come back because here in Denmark, all our country, work must be perfect. So, by well, this time I'm thinking, am I dreaming? No, you are not dreaming. So, okay, so, sorted now. You know you have radio. Don't speak radio. Go speak something else. Uh, radio sorted. <laughs> Is anybody listening? Okay. It was a, a couple of days later. I flew back here. And one week or two weeks, I think, we are knowing in here. I get a telephone call. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Uh, uh, equipment reach and TV this morning. We cleared, we paid all taxes, we paid all, uh, uh, all dues. Yours is to go and sign and get equipment. Now, engineer on, is on flight this morning. He arrived tomorrow. So go to airport, pick him up, and uh, then you can uh, work with him. We give him three weeks. You need to give him food and uh, put him in your house. He's a soldier. He can live anywhere. Uh, he, he survived the military. He cannot die very easily. <laughs> and sure enough, that, for, that day we went to Entebbe. And we were told, sign here, sign here, sign there. The government of Denmark paid for all the equipment and everything for our first radio station. What do you need? People. What do you need? Ideas. What do you need? Wisdom. Favor. And grace. As I'm talking now, that radio station is talking. It was the beginning of many to come. It was an intervention. The church here was fasting and praying. When I went over to Europe, the church here was fasting and praying. They had other issues, but I think one of, them, one of those issues was that. So, once somebody kickstarts you, it's your job now. To keep rolling. When God gives you an idea, run with it. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, when God gives you a vision, let everyone that reads it run with it. Habakkuk chapter 2 says the same. People, what you need is now to be in the presence of God with these four things, five things. Don't pray for other things. Stop praying. In an idea, you could have every car and every house and everything else in an idea. I repeat it. Stop praying for a car. You are limiting your vision. <laughs> Stop praying for small things. Don't be limited. We, we major on trivia. Think big. Dream big. Pray big. Let your prayer and your vision encompass everything. Did you hear Jabez pray? Lord, extend my territory. What does that mean? Expand my area of jurisdiction. What does that mean? It means everything within that territory. When you don't, when you limit your vision to small things, sometimes God says, 
this one has not grown enough. Because when I do that, if I give him 20 rabbits, he will give a testimony of 20 rabbits. I'll be a God limited to 20 rabbits. Uh -uh. Let him grow first. Can you imagine somebody giving a testimony? I thank God I now have a business. My rabbits are now 20. Praise God. Everybody please clap. And they are clapping for mm, 20 rabbits. If you have an opportunity to go before the king, ask for something big. Be extensive. Be all inclusive. Encompass more. Let your vision, your dream be larger. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. What about if I prayed for you now? Somebody's looking at their watches now. What about if I prayed for you that God made you a billionaire? Okay? If you got one billion shillings, the tithe would be just a hundred million. Simple as that. All I want is 100 million. I want you to have a billion. So that I can have my 100 million. If I had 10 of you, I would be a billionaire in terms of church and ministry. And I would have 10 billionaires seated somewhere. And I would have no reason to come here and talk about finances. What about if I prayed that kind of prayer for you? That God gives you something that is beyond normal. That God gives you something larger than what you ever prayed for. And out of that, the demand would be very simple. 10%, the tithe. Simple. Easy. Anybody with me? Those with me, stand up with me. Right. Let us give the Lord a hand then. Come on. Let us lift our hands now. Heavenly Father. Everybody say, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. I come before your presence. I thank you today. Because of your word. I am believing. That Psalms 102. Verse 13. Is mine. The seasons are changing. Your intervention is changing. You are intervening into my situation and you are bringing in a new season. Father, I thank you that my status quo is changing right now in the name of Jesus. Today marks the beginning of great things in my life. Big things, great things. Today, my vision is greater. My expectation is larger. I am walking into a new season where I will command and, and the heavens will answer. So Father, now, in the name of Jesus, give me what? Wisdom. Give me. What? Give me. What? Give me. Favor. Grace. Wisdom. People. And ideas. Lord, bring ideas into my head. Cause me to prosper. Cause me to grow big. Like Jabez, change my history, change my status quo, extend my borders, enlarge my territory, let my life be turned around to the glory of our God. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, please sit down. Before you leave church today, I want you to get your phones out and send us some money on the numbers that we already gave you. 
Do it now. Encourage yourself and do it now. We are beginning to collect funds, one, for Nambole, and two, to make sure that we eliminate everything called debt. We are just about there now. If everyone did something, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 and more, we would reach our targets and goals, and by end of October, we'll have enough money to do the Passover without any problem. Am I talking to anybody here now? So please send us some money. I repeat the numbers. 0781-985-985. 0751-985-985. Okay. Now, there is also an Airtel number, which is a complicated one. For those of you who, who want to go that route, you start with the star... You are doing the 0781, okay. It's 985, not 984. That's why you send money the wrong way. <laughs> okay? This long one is called, it is uh, star 185, star 4, star 9, star 1101. 806 star put the amount hush and send you want me to repeat well after the amount and the hush it will say reference or reason or whatever whatever Debt, Passover, Nambole, VCC, anything. Send. After that, it will ask you for your PIN, personal identification number. Put it there. I know the number, but you put it there. And the money should have come now. Okay? Once you've done that, you've done it for us. If you try an Airtel number and doesn't go through, then use the long one. The long one. A complicated one. I call it complicated, but that's the only way you can do it. If you want me to repeat it, you can write it on a piece of paper and keep it yourselves. It is star 185, star 4, star 9, star 1101806, star. Then amount, then hash, and send. After that, the other questions are easy for you to get. Finally. Good. Okay. You want to come and ask people if there's anybody who wants to get saved and give their life to Jesus? Come on. Do it. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. And also clap for our pastor. Yeah. Now he has mentioned something that I should start with. If you are here and you've never given your life to Jesus. You are great, yes, you are holy one. Walked upon the sea, raised that earth. Reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything routine about you is great.